Chapter Five of A Day at the County Fair. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Day at the County Fair by Alice Hale Burnett. Chapter Five, The Greased Pole. Did you ever see such large tomatoes? Exclaimed Jerry, pointing to a booth where some prize vegetables are being exhibited. I'm glad you like them," said a fat, smiling old woman who was standing near them. "For I grew them myself, and they're prize winners." "Oh, I don't see how you ever did it," declared Jerry. "I had a garden once, and most everything died but the weeds." "Well, my dear, wasn't that just too bad? Perhaps you forgot to water the plants. It's a bit of care every day that brings them along," and she patted Jerry's rosy cheeks. I guess the poor things starved to death," thought Jerry as she joined the others, "for I'm sure I often forgot them. What an enormous pumpkin, Uncle Billy! Do you think it's real?" asked Beth, as they stopped before a large display of them. "Yes, of course it's real," he assured her, "and just think of all the good pies it will make." "I wonder if Cinderella's chariot was as big a pumpkin as that," mused Mary. What are those funny-looking poles over there with cross pieces at the top? Jerry exclaimed. There's a boy trying to climb up one of them. Let's go over and see," suggested one of the others. So they made their way over and joined the crowd about the two poles, and were soon watching the boys who tried to climb up to secure the presents hanging from the cross pieces. I believe they are greased to be slippery like the pigs were," remarked Mary. They are," Uncle Billy replied. "It's a game brought over from France." It did seem for a while that not one of the boys would ever succeed in reaching the top. They would climb up a short way and then slide back, while the crowd laughed and cheered. Finally, a long-legged boy twisted himself around one of the poles, and with funny, quick motions, worked his way up near the top. "Oh, I do hope he gets there," whispered Jerry. Under her breath, as the boy had almost reached the top, his clothes look so ragged and poor. He's up! Shouted the crowd. What's he going to take? The boy now had one arm thrown about the cross piece and was looking at all the different things he had to choose from. Take your time, Sonny. Look them all over first," called out a good-natured man in the crowd below. But the boy was quick to decide and slid a shining pair of skates from off the pole across his shoulders. They'll come in handy before very long," he told the crowd with a laugh as he came down the pole. "Good for you, Spider!" called out his boy friends, running up to admire the fine new skates which he was proud to show. "What a horrid name!" commented Beth. "But I'm glad he won." End of chapter five.